This next fly I'm going to tie is going to be another still head wet fly, but you can probably use it for trout also, and it'll be tied on a SEB wet fly hook uh, size 8. This will not have a name because I'll just tie this as I go along. So again, I'll start with my thread base right over the return. I think I'd like to put a tag on this, so I'm going to put this here. French tinsel from the 1900s. So where do you find all these items? Uh, I have a lot of sources. Uh, I have a friend that lives in Seattle that uh, sells tinsels and vintage fly tying materials. And then there's this one shop called Tinsel Trading Co. out of New York. And they have tons of tinsels from millineries uh, where they used to make robes and other kinds of things like that. They go to the Albany show. Um, they were at the Atlantic Salmon Fly Tying event in Seattle last year. So this will be my tag. Yep. And this gets tied directly under the shank. I don't clip, taper the edge of the tinsel because if I put it right under the hook shank, I can just wrap it over itself and you won't see a bulge, nor will you see the overwrap from the first turn. Let's pull this out of the way. I'll just take my thumbnail and press that in and then wrap over. And because this is such a dark uh, color of tinsel, you won't necessarily see it against the hook shank, but when the light hits it while it's under the water, it'll add a subtle flash to the finished fly. And this will get tied in as I generally tie in most of my ribbing on the far side of the hook. Just slightly under the shank, but not directly under. And this is going back over the tag so that I can add my tail in now. A hybrid pheasant, a Lewis silver, Lewis pheasant and a silver pheasant crossed. And a nice tail right on top of the shank. and loose wraps, then tighten them down and go back over it. And this is a mixture of beeswax and um, a wax made by Bill Bailey and candle wax. Mm. And you have to rub it together to get it pliable, just rubbing it on the hook or on the thread so that'll help hold the seal fur on the hook. I'll do another loop. And I'll start putting small amounts of seal fur in between the two strands of thread. It is a dubbing loop. All of it's done by hand. I do have tools to do to uh, make the loop, but sometimes, in, especially in smaller flies, it's easier to just put it in like this rather than breaking out a bunch of tools to do 
what can simply be done by hand. And I'm making sure that I'm packing this hair back so that you don't see the underbody, which consists of the black thread and the tail. And just put a little bit more in there. And I'm going to, it's not going to be as thick as this part here because I want to make sure that when I put my wing on, it doesn't stick up in the air. I want it to lie more flat to the body than, or lie closer to the body rather than up. So this would be a good slow water fly. Clip off my loop. And wrap my tinsel forward. I'm moving some of this out of the way so that I can make sure I get a good seat of this tinsel around the body so that it doesn't slip off. This looks like it only gets three turns, so I'm going to widen this a little bit. I'm just going to tie a holding loop or holding wrap here. I'm going to pick out my hair and make my final wrap. Tie that off. And this is squirrel tail. This will be our wing. Clear out the fluff. I'm going to pull out some of the longer hairs here. And loop around the hair. This is soft wrap down for length. And pull it to where I'm satisfied with the length. And then begin my wraps off. I'll trim this. And this fly will get a true collar. And what I mean by true collar is that it'll be right in front of the uh, wing and it'll just go straight back over the wing. And I'm going to try to tie them in at the same time. I'm going to add a couple of jungle cock feathers to either side of the wing. Oh, looks pretty good. I'll tie that down. Clip some of the fluff out so that our, the head, when we get to it, is not too big. And I'm putting a little head cement in here because what tends to happen with smaller flies and squirrel wings and all this stuff that I have built up here, it pulls out. So this will help hold it together. I'll give it a couple more wraps. And this one, since it has such a taper on it, I'm going to tie it in the opposite way of how you normally tie in a hackle. Normally we tie them in tip first and then forward, but I want this to flow with the shape of the hook, with the shape of the head. So the bigger side will be on the back side closer to the wing, the smaller side closer to the head. This one should work. A little twisted. Clip off the excess. And then build a head. And whip finish. And 
head cement. And there's a simple hair wing wet, no name, tied on the vise. Um, the collection of frames I brought today, the first one is, I call in there's obscure dry flies. There were, I have some old Sealy hooks that I found on eBay, and they're an interesting shaped barbless with a little, like, hump where the barb would normally be. So I'm like, what can I do with these? So I went through Leonard's book and found all the dry flies that I could think of that I've never heard of, and tied flies based on those, and framed them. The next one I call Aria. It's in um, a copper, uh, patinaed copper frame-ish type of thing. And the fly is based on the patinaed copper. I always look for interesting things to incorporate into my fly tying art. I wanted to use this piece of copper that I had patinaed. So I'm like, what can I tie with it? So the streamer that is represented in the frame is all based around the colors in the copper. Mm -hmm. And it's called Aria because it's like a song. The copper patina is singing to the fly. The fly is singing to the copper. The next fly plate is um, an exercise in different hook shapes and how they affect the pattern. I tied one pattern, I'm like, oh, this is a nice pattern. But I couldn't just put one fly into a frame. So what I decided to do was look through all of my hooks, and I have hundreds of varieties of hooks, and looking for steelhead type um, hooks, I found eight or nine that looked like they would fit together. Um, even though they were different shapes, they're all steelhead salmon hooks. So I tied the pattern that I used um, the recipe um, in seven different varieties on different types and sizes of hooks. Trying to keep the proportions the same, but because of the size of the hooks, you can't always do that. So trying to make a representation of the lead fly, which is the top fly, um, and six other flies. The final one is, um, it's a, I, I believe it's a bookshelf holder that you can put pictures in. I was like, that would be something cool if I could tie a fly that can go in there. Mounting it was a challenge because normally you, when you frame flies, you put a mat around it and you have something that visibly holds it into its place on the frame, on the, on the mat board also. Um, and I figured out that if I make a box within the box of the frame, that I could use something to mount the fly on there. And the, it's mounted on a piece of petrified wood um, that is simply glued on to the, the mat. And you can view it from both sides. So it's an interesting talking piece. You can have it on your office desk. You can have it on your bookshelf and change the orientation. And it's a new picture. I see thy bright just in the sunlight, the of hills and See what the green hills are lovely.